the power of Photoshop is to be able to select one area of the picture and do something just to that without affecting anything else. It's a very, very powerful tool. So let me open up a picture and we'll start with the selection tools. There are four different selection tools in Photoshop and we're going to be talking about three of them initially. Here's a photograph of a red leaf on a yellow fern. Now, if we wanted to, to select that leaf, we could do all kinds of things to the background or the leaf itself. For example, we could change the color of the leaf, we could make the leaf black and white, we could keep the leaf red and make the background black and white, we could, once we select that leaf, uh, cut it out and put it somewhere else, all kinds of possibilities. So the first three tools we'll talk about are these three right here. You've got the, this tool right here is the rectangular marquee tool. This is the lasso tool and this is the magic wand tool. Ultimately, they have the same purpose to choose one area of your picture and not choose the rest of it. So Let's use the magic wand tool initially. The magic wand tool selects an area of your picture based upon color and contrast. So in this case, it's fairly easy to select the, the red leaf because it's mostly red and the background isn't. However, if you look closely at this, you'll see that it's not just one tone in red. You've got some very dark areas like right here and down here, and you've got light areas like right here and here. Every time you select a tool, you have choices up here in the toolbar and they change. So we have the magic wand tool selected. The first thing I'd like to direct your attention to is this tolerance box because, here let's change this to 32. 32 is actually the default. When you open Photoshop, it normally goes to 32. I was working before so it was 12. 32 is the default. And, and what this refers to is, when you click in the red leaf, let me click right, right here. What this tells me is that the tolerance of 32 isn't enough to grab the whole leaf because of all those tones I mentioned to you. We have dark here and light here and so on. So if the precise point in the leaf that I click is, let's say, light, it'll grab all of those like tones around it. Instead of 32, let's change the tolerance now to 65. This is an arbitrary number that I just picked out of the hat, although I know for sure that the tolerance has been increased. So it's going to grab more of the leaf, more of the highlights, more of the shadows. Watch what happens. I click there and now more of the leaf is selected because my tolerance has increased. If I decrease the tolerance, Let's, let's deselect. And by the way, the, the deselection, if you don't want your selection anymore, you go select, deselect, just like that. Or the shortcut, as you can see right here, is Command or Control D, Control for a PC, Command for a Mac. If I change my tolerance back down to, let's say, 20, and I grab in here, well, that was really too small. I grab right here, it's a much smaller area. So let's deselect with my shortcut Command D or Control D, bring it back up to 65, and now, okay, the, the amount that it selects depends upon the precise point where I click in that leaf. If you blow this up, you can see that there are tones in here and if I happen to click in a dark area then it'll select those darker pixels. The light area like right in here it'll grab the lighter areas. That, that's why every time I click it's a little bit different. Okay, I have selected one part of the leaf. I want to add to that selection. So the way you can add to a selection in Photoshop is by holding the shift key down and this is true of either the rectangular marquee tool, the lasso tool, 
and the magic wand tool. If I hold my shift key down and I click again, it's going to add to that selection. However, look what happened. I went outside the leaf. Because my tolerance was pretty high at 65, let me undo that. In Photoshop, anytime you want to undo the last command that you, that you just did, it's Command or Control Z. So let's undo that. And let me lower my tolerance now back down to 32. Hold the Shift key down now to add. Click down here. OK. Let me demagnify that so you can see the whole leaf. And you can see I've added to my selection. Back on the Magic Wand tool, I'm going to continue adding to the whole selection until I've got the whole leaf selected. So I hold the Shift key down again. Click in here. Click in here. All the time holding the Shift key down. Okay, now, instead of clicking in all these little places, there's a number of different things I could do. Here, let me get this little piece right there. Holding the Shift key down as I'm clicking. Now, I can take the Lasso tool and watch this. The Lasso tool is like a free-form selection tool. I'm going to hold the Shift key down, and I can just draw right in the center here. And now this is entirely selected. Let me hold the Shift key down again. I'm going to grab all this with the Lasso tool. You see, the Lasso tool is this freeform tool you can draw and get your selection that way. Now, I'm not getting along the edge here because what I was hoping for is that the Magic Wand tool would take care of the edge for me. Because of the contrast between the red and the yellow, I was hoping that the Magic Wand tool would grab just the red and not the yellow. So let's, this tool right here is the magnifier tool. So we can blow that up and look at the edge. And it's gotten close, but not all of it. Not along the, the precise edge that we'd like. Let me make the point. The Magic Wand tool is very convenient. It works fast. And it's easy, but I don't trust it. It's good for many things, but right here it didn't give me a perfect edge. So let's go back to the Magic Wand tool and see if we can make our selection more perfect along the, the, the critical edge here. I want to add this to my selection. So I'm going to hold the Shift key down again, click in here, and there, now it's, it's getting a lot closer. There, look at that. That's nice. Okay, go along here. Oh, let me mention one other thing. Um, when you're magnified and you're working on a selection and you want to move the image to work on a different part of it, the hand tool can do that for you. See this? When you're magnified. However, Photoshop has many, many shortcuts, and one shortcut that you absolutely have to remember, and after a very short time, it'll just be part of you. Uh, if you're on, let's say, the Magic Wand tool, instead of laboriously going to the Hand tool, moving it, going back to the Magic Wand tool, all you have to do is press the Space Bar. The Space Bar will turn any tool into the Hand. Okay? So you can move that like that, release the Space Bar, and it goes back to the magic wand. So let's continue grabbing this edge here. Hold the shift key down. We've got that, we've got that. Now here, this is, there's a bunch of colors in here, so let's see what happens. Well, okay, did a good job in there. See, the reason why it's grabbing the red and not the yellow is because, as I said before, the Magic Wand Tool works on the basis of color and contrast. This is red, that's yellow. So it's grabbing the red. When the tones get really, really close together, then you have to get into another selection process. So let's continue here, clicking all along. 
the more precise that you make that edge, the more realistic it will be when you make your, your ultimate change. Now, all of these little things in here, you don't have to click into each one. Go back to the lasso tool, hold the shift down to add, and just grab them. See how easy that is? Okay. Now, what you could do, instead of the magic wand tool, you could use the lasso tool to go along the edge. So, for example, look at I can take the lasso tool and very carefully draw along that edge. That's another way to do it. Let's grab that little one. Okay. So I could continue with the, with the lasso tool all along here. Along this edge. This may seem laborious, but by the time I'm done, the selection will be absolutely perfect. And the edge will be realistically separated from the background. I'm going to continue around the entire periphery of the leaf, going along the edge, making a very careful selection so it is absolutely precise. I know that this kind of thing is laborious, but I wanted to start off with this technique to show you that if you want your images to be as good as they can possibly be and believable, if let's say you cut and paste later, that uh, this is what you have to do. I wanted to mention one more thing. Notice that I'm working at 300%. This kind of magnification is necessary if you want that ultimate precision. Okay, here's the last section for the entire leaf. But I wanted to point out also that if there is one area that you went over the line, like I did right here. See, I went over just a little bit here. To subtract that area from the selection, you hold down the Option on a Mac or the Alt on a PC, and you just grab that area, and now it's gone. So you hold down the Shift to add, and the Alt or the Option to subtract. When you have magnified, on a picture and you want to get back down to the whole thing, you can hit either Command or Control minus or double click the hand and it goes right back down. Oh, there's a few areas that I missed. Let me grab the lasso tool and grab them and now it's done. So, we now have the leaf selected. That means we can do whatever we want to the leaf and the background will be unaffected. Or we can inverse the selection. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And we can affect the background without touching the leaf. Before I do anything else, I want to save my work. And the way you do that is by going under the pull down menu, select, all the way down to the bottom, save selection. I have a choice of naming the selection, but I never do that, and I just go OK, and Photoshop calls my selection Alpha 1. That's why these are called Alpha Channels. OK, you can see that, what you've just done. Here is your Layers, Channels, and Paths palettes all combined, really. Right now we see the Layers palette. If we hit Channels, there's my leaf, and it's called Alpha 1. So. That tells me that, that my saved selection is part of this picture now. However, let me go back to layers. If I close this file right now without saving the, the entire file, I'll lose my selection. I save the selection temporarily, but to permanently make that part of the picture, I have to go File, 
Under File, go to Save. Uh, let me just mention right now the difference between Save and Save As. When I choose Save As, I have to give this file a new name. Then I will end up with two pictures just like this, one with the alpha channel and one without. If I go Save, which I'm going to do right now, the shortcut is Command or Control S. Photoshop will save this over the original. So now um, I don't have two files, I have just the one. In other words, this picture with the saved selection is now the only uh, image I have of, of that leaf. Okay, now I can close this picture, open it back up again, and my alpha channel with my selection that I just spent quite a bit of time on is a permanent part of this picture. So, let me show you what you can do with a selection like this. Um, well, for one thing, I can hide these marching ants, these little uh, dashed lines that blink on and off. I'm going to hide them because they're annoying, to be honest, and I don't want to work with them on. You can go under View, Extras, and that will hide it. It toggles back and forth. It's still selected, but now it's just hidden those marching ants, I can go back to view extras again, it brings them back. The shortcut is command or control H for hide. So let's just turn them off. Uh, again, the leaf is still selected. So let's say we want to change the color. We can go into image adjustments, hue and saturation. The shortcut for this dialog box is Command U. Um, all of the color adjustments for your pictures are right in this pull down menu Image Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. Photoshop CS4 has made a dialog box that makes it easy to bring up all of these uh, right at your fingertips, but I wanted to show you where the original pull down menu operation resides. Here is the Hue and Saturation dialog box. Now remember, I'm only going to affect what is selected. So let's say we want to change the color. We can do that by changing the hue. You see that? Now it's purple. We can keep going and you have a whole bunch of choices here. You can also choose Saturation to increase the saturation or we can desaturate it so it's black and white. Notice how only the leaf is being affected. Let's close that dialog box because I want to show you something that's really cool. Let's, let's bring back our selection so you can see it. View Extras. And let's say we want to affect the background. What I'm going to show you now is how to inverse this selection so that you can select the background but not the leaf. And you do that right here. Select Inverse. If you look here on the screen, you see the bottom edge here, you got the marching ants. All of the background now is selected except the leaf. So let's bring back our Hue and Saturation dialog box. Image Adjustments Hue and Saturation. And now let's desaturate it. Look at that. This is how you can keep one area of your picture in color and turn the rest black and white. I would be remiss if I didn't mention to you that when you convert color to black and white, you always are going to lose contrast. That's why the background seems very flat. So there are a few ways to adjust that in Photoshop. Uh, let's, let's click OK here and let's go to now Image Adjustments. Now here's Hue and Saturation, but if you want to change contrast, you can do it two ways. You can do it in Curves or Levels. Uh, levels is easier, so let's just do that for now. I use Levels all the time. By moving these slider bars like this, you can affect the contrast. Let's go OK, and we can now toggle back and forth with Command Z or Control Z because we undo it and then redo it. That's, that's before, 
That's the original, and that's the contrast your version. Okay, we can hide those marching ants, and now what we've done is affect just the background and not the leaf. Let's say we want to turn this into a sepia look. We can go into our um, color balance dialog box, image adjustments, color balance, shortcut commander control B. Let's introduce a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red. That's basically what sepia is. Red and yellow together make orange and sepia color is re really a, it's a dark orange. So let's make this a little more red and now look let me hide the ants uh, view extras so now what we've done is made the background sepia and we still have that bright red leaf I like that so I'm gonna save it I don't want to use file save if I use file save this will replace the color image it'll save this over the color image so I'll go save as I'm gonna give it a new name let's call this uh, sepia red leaf and I'm gonna save this to my desktop right here that way I can find it it's gonna save it with the alpha channel remember we made an alpha channel and uh, I'll go save so this is one of the powers of Photoshop to work on one area and not another. Now I will show you how to use the rectangular marquee tool. This photograph was taken in Namibia and it just so happens to have a nice straight horizon. So I can select the entire sky, putting the cursor right along the horizon and moving up and dragging it right across. This is a really quick and easy way to select uh, a sky or anything else if you happen to have nice horizontal lines or vertical lines. Once my sky is selected, I can then alter it, contrast, color, uh, make it black and white, whatever I want. So for example, let's say we want to add more contrast and make it more stormy looking. I can go into Image, Adjustments, Levels, I use levels for contrast as well as exposure. The shortcut, of course, is Commander Control L. So let's bring the shadows down a bit, take the midtones, move them down. And now you can see a much darker, threatening sky. Sometimes when you increase the contrast, what happens to, to the saturation is that it increases. So we want to desaturate that now because it looks uh, too saturated for the rest of the picture. Image, adjustments, hue and saturation. Remember shortcut commander control U. And we can now desaturate this to make it gray instead of that, that bluishness. Much better. Let's hide those marching ants. View extras and now it's a much more dramatic sky. Okay, let's close this and let's open up another picture. Here's a portrait I did in Indonesia and let's say we want to adjust the lipstick on my young model here. I'm going to blow this up. Notice that I did not hit the magnifier tool. What you want to do is minimize hand movements wherever you can because that increases the speed with which you can work in Photoshop. So the shortcut on the Mac keyboard, Macintosh, is to hold the spacebar down and the command. That automatically turns the cursor into a magnifier tool to to blow it up. On a PC, the shortcut is Control Spacebar. It does the same thing. So 
I'm going to work here at 200%. This time I'll click the lasso tool and I'm going to select the lips very carefully. Moving all the way around. Let me mention at this point that to do this with a mouse is challenging. It's certainly possible, but it's definitely challenging to be this precise. I'm using a Wacom tablet, and that consists of a pen with a tablet, and it makes it much, much easier to work in Photoshop. Now, if I in, add a little bit too much, like see, there's a little bit too much skin right here. So on the lasso tool, to take away from my selection, I hold down the option on a Mac or on a, on a uh, PC, it's the Alt key. I can come in and reduce that selection a little bit, maybe a little bit right here, a little bit here, I'm going to get rid of that skin, holding the option down or the Alt, I'm reducing the selection by that amount. Okay? Now, let's bring that back down. I have reduced my selection now, again with a shortcut. On a Mac, it's the spacebar and the option. On a PC, it's the spacebar and the Alt key. Okay. I don't want a really hard edge along this line, which I would get if I didn't soften it. If you look closely at somebody's lips, when the lip tissue ends and, and the facial skin begins, there's a real soft transition there. And so I'm going to feather the edge of my selection just a little bit. Here's how I do it. Select, Modify, Feather. I'm going to choose three pixels here. I'm going to click OK. And now I will double click the hand. I'm going to hide the edges with View Extras. And now, with my Hue Saturation dialog box, I can do many things. I can increase the saturation, make her lipstick look a lot richer and more saturated. I can change the hue, so instead of red, I've got pink or, or purple. Given that I have now this purplish magenta color, I can desaturate that, have it be softer, or I can make it, you know, outlandish. So here's another application for selecting a small area of the picture and making some kind of adjustment to it. Okay, let's close that and let me open up a picture I took in Bryce Canyon. I'm going to show you how we can use the selection tool to replace the sky. Everybody wants to replace the sky at some point or another because when you're photographing in nature, you know, the weather doesn't cooperate. You have a, a white sky when you want some clouds. You have a um, cloudy sky when you want a nice blue sky. All kinds of situations that call for some artistic enhancement. So with the magic wand tool, right now I have a tolerance of 10. So watch what happens when I click in the upper part of this picture. I get, well, what, 25% of the selection? And the reason was because this is a very, very subtle shade of blue, and down here it gets whiter and whiter and whiter. My tolerance is 10. It's very low tolerance, which means when I click in the powder blue area, very, very subtle blue, it is intolerant enough to not grab a little more of the whiter blue. If I hold down the shift key, click here, I'll grab more and more until it's largely selected. Let me blow this up and look at what's going on here. There's some little specks in here because of grain. Actually, this photograph was originally filmed. And therefore, there's some grain in here. It's not a solid color. That's why you have all of these little areas that were not selected. So 
instead of taking the lasso tool and you know circling and circling getting all of that in I'm going to go to what I consider to be one of Photoshop's little secrets under select modify remember this is how we found feather well right above it is, is expand expand means I'm going to expand the selection outward and you're given a dialog box you can choose now the number of pixels you want to expand the selection outward in this case I'm going to choose two look at it. it's grabbed everything in the sky but the other thing it's done is it's pushed the selection into the rocks and the reason why I think that's a good idea is because if you look carefully at the demarcation line between the rocks and the sky you can see at 800 percent here what you have here is a gradual transition over the course of two or three or four pixels where the rock gradually goes into the sky if you left the selection on the outside along the sky what would happen is here let me show you along this edge here there's going to be a very light line along the edge so when you look at the final composite it just won't look right it'll look like like a Photoshop effect it won't look real so I much prefer coming in into the rocks and then I'm going to soften that with a one pixel feather but I said to you before that I don't trust the magic wand tool to give me a perfect selection so I'm going to go all along this area and look at the selection very very carefully okay you see right in this area here I'm going to click on the lasso tool hold the shift key down and go in there and add that to my selection I'm pressing the space bar down and moving the image all along okay look at here it didn't grab that hold the shift key down with my lasso tool and grab that this is the way that you can make your pictures perfect I know it takes more time but the end result will be worth it look at right here grabbing this holding the shift key down now when you get into an area like this this is why the, the magic wand tool is not the end-all solution for making selections the sky is is very white with a tinge of blue in it as you can see this right here is actually a little bit of snow on the cliffs at Bryce the selection went into the the uh, mountain here and assumed that this that the snow right here was part of the sky well it wasn't so I want to eliminate this part from the selection and I do that by holding the option down on a Mac or the alt on a PC and now I will do this and now now this is actually more accurate I could even do it down here a little bit by fine-tuning your selection by examining it I'm actually at 800% I don't need to be that much let's let's come down there's a I, I actually work at, at 300% but I want to show you how precise you can get and if you want to make it absolutely perfect how precise you should get here look at this lasso tool hold the shift key down to go all around here because that is part of the sky you see it didn't grab this because you see this little junction right here the little passageway there's some pixels in here that are slightly darker than the sky so it didn't let the selection go through that's why you have to examine this carefully look at right here this is too much so we'll hold the option down or the alt and add that back into the selection there okay let's double click on the hand I didn't go over the entire periphery but for the sake of 
time. I, uh, I'm going to stop right here and I think you get the idea. Now, what picture do we want to put in here? I'm going to go into my folder here and pick this cloudy sky. Now, in a picture like this, this obviously was taken on an overcast day. It would be foolish to put a blue sky in there. It wouldn't make sense. It would be even more foolish to put a sunset or sunrise in there. That just wouldn't make sense at all. You need to put a, a sky that was taken under overcast conditions, and obviously that's a gray sky. But you don't want a featureless gray sky. You want some clouds in there to give you some form and texture. So that's why I chose this picture. Okay, let's select this with Select All. This is how you select the entire picture. The shortcut is Command or Control A. It's a command that you'll be using all the time. And the next step, okay, right now it's selected, so we have to copy this picture to the clipboard. The clipboard in Photoshop is a temporary holding place. You can't see it, it's invisible. But when you go Edit Copy, Shortcut Commander Control C. The picture is now placed in the clipboard. You only get one picture at one time in the clipboard because if I if I copy another picture into the clipboard, it bounces this one out. So basically, if you're doing this fast, you're working fast, you go Command A, Command C, or Control A, Control C. You've gone to the selection tool that grabs the whole picture then you've copied it to the clipboard and now we click on the uh, tab on the Bryce Canyon shot now watch uh, first I've got my selection but I want to feather it I want to make that edge realistically soft I don't want to feather it too much and if I don't feather it enough it'll have a razor edge between the clouds and the mountain that just won't look right so I go select modify feather and I always choose when I cut and paste one pixel as my feather I go OK you can't see it but it softens it just enough as I'll show you in a minute to put the clouds into the sky I go paste into paste into means it puts it into my selection if I just go paste it just puts the clouds right over the whole picture and that's not what you want so we'll undo that, Command Z or Control Z. I go Edit, Paste Into, and now it's right behind these pinnacles in the sky. When you have a pasted in image, first notice that this is now a layer. In the Layers palette, this, this palette right here that I've placed under my Actions palette, actually consists of three different palettes. You've got the layers, channels, and paths. Here's my layers. This tells me that I now have a floating layer. Um, what that means is that the cloud picture is basically floating over the uh, Bryce Canyon shot. A layer is like a selection in that you can do something to it and not to the rest of the picture. For example, we can move it. If I click on the Move tool, the upper right corner tool here, the Move tool is used for moving layers. So look at we can move this around. We can get different parts of the sky. Um, we can also flip this horizontally. All of the moving of your layers happens in the Move tool and here. Edit, Transform, and then here are your tools. If we want to flip a layer horizontally, we go Flip Horizontal right here. And now it's reversed. If we don't like that, we go Command Z, and now it's back to the original. So let's say we want to lighten this a little bit. Image Adjustments Levels. I use levels for lightening and for contrast or darkening. I don't want to move the right hand slider because this is the highlights. Watch what happens if I move the 
highlight so, so they get brighter. I very quickly blow this area out. The last thing you want to do in a photograph is blow the highlights. It makes the picture worthless. When there's no texture or detail here, it's just uh, ready for the trash bin. Okay, so we'll move that back. Let's brighten the, the mid-tones because the truth is if you expose for these rocks in this very dark day and the sky was, is fairly bright, uh, you would have a fairly light sky. So I think that looks quite realistic. Let's say you want to do something to just the rocks. Well, in your layers palette, you have this, this blue color here indicates that the layer is highlighted. If we click down here, now the background is highlighted, which is the rocks at Bryce. Now we can do whatever we want. We can add texture, make it black and white, add saturation, add contrast, all kinds of things. As I look at this, the rocks seem to be flat, uh, low in contrast, and not very saturated. So let's go into my favorite dialog box in Photoshop, image adjustments, uh, hue and saturation right there. And I'm going to increase the saturation. Look at the rocks. Now, to be honest, this is what they look like when you're there. The rocks in Bryce Canyon are very saturated, even <laughs> in reality. So let's make it like they really look. Okay. Now, if I want to add a little contrast to that, and remember, this is a very dull day. And uh, when you're there during the summer and it's bright and sunny, the rocks look really contrasty. This dull day, they, they were very, very flat. So image adjustments levels for my contrast adjustments. Let's take the, the shadows and darken them a little bit. Mid-tones, dark, highlights up a little bit. Look at that. I'm going to go OK. Now here, look at That's before, that's after. It's subtle, but I think it makes it better. So now we have a new sky. And let me blow this up. I want to show you the transition zone. This is how cut and paste transition zone should look. You see there's a few feathers, a uh, few pixels here, gradually transitions from the rock into the sky. There's no telltale white line from the original sky. And it's absolutely perfect. This is how it would look if it were really there. That's why I use the expand command to expand my selection outward and that's why I use a one pixel feather. Let's double click on the hand. Here's the whole picture. I'm going to save this now. Remember, if I go File, Save, it'll save this picture over the original. But I want to keep the original, so I'll go File, Save As. And that means I have to give it a new unique name. I will give it, uh, let's just call it Bryce with sky and I always save things to my desktop that way I can find them and I go save. Okay. Now notice one thing here at the bottom of the picture uh, it says the document is 40.2 megs. That means the original document was 40.2 megs but it now has a layer. And when you add another layer, you increase the, the file size. Uh, this now says 101.8 megs. Every time you add a layer, the file size goes up. If you add a very small segment, like a, a little eye or a tree branch or a bird, and it's very small in the frame, then the file size will go up just a little bit. But in this case, I'm going to click on the Move tool here to show you. This is a whole big picture. And so I have two large pictures here, the clouds and, and Bryce. And that's why my 
uh, file size is so high. When I store my pictures on the hard drive, if I think there's ever a chance that I'll want to come back here and replace this background, I'll save it with the layer. But if I say that's it, I'll never want to change this for the rest of my life, I can flatten the layers here under this pull down menu, layer, flatten image, and now the file size is reduced significantly. The reason why I have 44 megs down here, 44.3 instead of 40, is because in my channels palette, I still have this selection of the sky. So that adds a little bit of uh, file size, but not very much. So I'm going to keep that. And let me also mention, I didn't talk about this before, when you have an alpha channel, you can recall that selection uh, by holding the command down or the control on the keyboard and clicking your alpha 1 or alpha 2 channel, whatever. You click it and it brings back that selection again. Okay? Let me just recap. What we've done is we, we made a selection of the sky, we expanded our selection so we didn't have a telltale white line from the original background. We dropped the sky in with edit paste into and then I used the move tool to move it into position. I then chose in the, the background layer, um, which you can't see now because I flattened the image. I chose the background layer to add contrast and saturation to the rocks and I think now this is a much, much stronger picture.